Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And I hadn't checked in in a while to see what he was up to, but I did yesterday because some of my subscribers made me aware that none other than Strap On Destiny has gone mostly vegan, and he is now claiming that milk is terrible for you. Let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skill on my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. This is one of the reasons I kind of covered this topic earlier today about good foods versus bad foods. Uh, because the fact of the matter is, people in different movements and philosophies can say whatever they want about things like milk, that it's not natural, it's, it's bad for you, it causes this problem, it causes that problem, but the reality is, that is not what the scientific evidence says. Now, it comes as no surprise to me that uh, Strap-On would make such a claim because he's not exactly big on the science. Now, keep in mind, this is a guy who honestly believes that doing heavy partials through the strongest range of motion with a weight that's too heavy for you to lift, but skipping the hardest parts of the range of motion actually overloads the muscle and can stimulate similar or superior hypertrophy to doing the full range of motion exercise. That's just not true. That's not based on science either. But he believes that, and I think he was calling it something like nucleus overload training. Complete absurdity. Again, someone who isn't really interested in science. Uh, you know, because he can market things. Now, the point is, when we get over to this, look, I understand people have their ethical beliefs. If you choose to say, hey, I don't believe in eating meat or I don't believe in eating dairy for ethical reasons, religious reasons, that's, that's your personal business, right? That's not my job to tell you how to live your life, right? It's not my job. That's your choice to make. It's your choice to make for yourself. Uh, and I respect people's right to that choice. However, they need to accept the consequences of it. You might be cutting foods out that actually are beneficial to you. And let's come over to dairy because this is one of these that gets a bad rap that the amount of data to the contrary is pretty overwhelming at this point. So much so that I would say that for most people, if you aren't consuming dairy, you're probably not doing the ideal thing for your body. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm telling you that you should be sitting around eating sticks of butter or that you should be eating 2,000 calories of cheese every day. But when it comes to dairy, uh, people need to look closely at this. I'll go to the cancer thing in a minute because that has been pretty thoroughly debunked in the modern world. Uh, but it seems like vegans and other people are unaware of the fact that it's been debunked because they're not really interested in science that disagrees with their ethics. You know, which again, you see that with religion and everything else. It's normal for people who are entrenched in a belief system to do that. That's normal. So the whole point is, let's talk about just for lifters, athletes, fitness, things like that. What do we know about the quality of protein as far as building muscle goes? Dairy tends to be the best proteins. When we start looking at things like basic amino acid profiles and bioavailability, dairy as in milk and eggs, are actually superior to meat for those purposes. If we're going to say what's the most efficient gram of protein, in other words, what source of protein could you eat the smallest amount of and gain the most recovery from training from and gain the most muscle mass from? It's going to be dairy. It's going to be dairy. In fact, you need less protein. If you were to consume these as your primary protein sources, you wouldn't actually need quite as much protein for ideal body composition. You wouldn't need as much because they have a better bioavailability and they have a superior amino acid profile. They're actually really good. I mean, they're designed to grow things. Milk is designed to grow baby mammals and put muscle and size on them as quickly as possible. Eggs help a baby chicken grow to a chick very, very quickly. It's their intended purpose, and they work very good at it, and they work very good for that in other things that eat them. So the quality of protein is superior. It's better than meat, so much so that if I were to say if you had to cut 
all of your protein sources out other than one primary one. If you were to leave one, it would be the best one to leave in. It would be dairy, be the milk protein. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like if you had to choose, that would be your go-to. If you could only have one real high protein food, that would be your source. It would be your best choice about fat loss. Because let's talk about health. I mean, obesity kills people. Obesity is an enormous killer in the Western world. Pretty much the number one cause of death is obesity related in the United States. It kills. Obesity kills. What do we know about dairy? Now, this is more pronounced in women than in men in studies. But generally, people who consume several servings of low-fat or fat-free dairy on a weight loss diet usually lose slightly more weight. They lose slightly more weight. And that's been confirmed in a lot of studies. And they think there's a lot of other factors involved, not necessarily affecting the calories in. Uh, but it could be. In the sense of we're going back to this point of blood sugar control, muscle preservation, recovery from exercise. Yeah, all these things are going to affect your, your weight loss. They will affect your weight loss. So this has been consistently stoned in dozens of studies over the years that people who consume significant portions of leaner dairies lose body fat more quickly when following a weight loss diet and exercise program. They do. It's not mind-boggling differences. But when if you're trying to lose body fat, again, we're coming back to this point. Body composition, dairy is awesome. Dairy is awesome. And I mean, the research is overwhelming. Now, a lot of people say, well, there's lactose intolerance. Well, a lot of people have lactose intolerance. But you need to remember, it's very much ethnically based. And I'm not going to get into the full breakdown, but there are ethnicities of people in the world where lactose intolerance is very, very low. And there are ethnicities where it's very high. It's not a universal trait. I will give you a pro tip, though. The majority of the people who watch YouTube fitness every day probably fall under the categories of people who are least likely to be lactose intolerant. So this is not really your ideal audience. Is this the parts of the world where these <laughs> this is watched? Um, for the most part, handle dairy fairly well in terms of, of just demographics. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean that because a person's lactose intolerant that they can't get benefits from dairy because humans learned over thousands of years to culture dairy. All around the world, in regions where lactose intolerance is an issue, they have various cultured drinks and foods made from dairy. Well, what do we know about cultured dairy? It gets rid of your problems with lactose intolerance, for one. Number two, it has additional health benefits that standard dairy doesn't have. All right, all these things like yogurts, kefir. I love kefir. If you guys haven't had kefir, give it a try. You can get it at Walmart, actually. Walmart's Kroger's. They sell it. It's a cultured uh, drink also made from dairy. It's amazing. But those live and active cultures, they have... Benefits to your immune system, your digestive tract. Hell, they even help with yeast infections. All right, this is good stuff. And we'll get to that on cancer in a minute because there has been a correlation found in at least one type of cancer and cultured dairy reducing mortality from it. So, let's jump over to the cancer thing because that's the big one. Oh, dairy causes cancer. Where is your evidence? Well, Dr. T. Campbell did mice research to where he fed mice in 1950, whatever, 100 to 200 grams of casein protein every day, and those mice got cancer. When's the last time you personally consumed 50% of your body weight in dairy protein every day for a year straight? In any of you ever done that? You've never had 3,000, 4,000 grams of dairy protein every day? You know, you got to eat the entire 10 pound bag of casein whey every day? Like, who, who does that? That's the, the research that you have. That is the entirety of the research that you have showing that dairy causes cancer. That's it. 
And if dairy caused cancer in humans, we would probably see it in the data. How, how many meta-analysis have been done looking at this multiple, multiple meta-analysis? You have meta-analysis looking at individual cancers, and you have meta-analysis looking at total demographics and populations in cancer and diet. You know what they found? They found one single type of dairy seems to be correlated when it take consumed high enough with one type of cancer. And they found another type of dairy that seems to be correlated with reduced rates and mortality of, another, of a different type of cancer. That's what's been found so far. The only links. Outside of those two, there has been zero correlation found between dairy intake and deaths by cancer. None, none, nothing. If it caused cancer, we would see that people who consume dairy would have higher rates of cancer than, say, vegans. They don't. They don't. At all. And I don't mean even a 1% higher rate. What do we see? What are the good and the bad? Well, breast cancer. We found, that through meta-analysis, and by we I mean the researchers, not us personally, not you and I. Well, you might be one of those researchers listening, I don't know. That women who consume cultured yogurt with live and active cultures get breast cancer at a lower rate than women who do not. Outside of that, they found zero, zero overlap between dairy intake and breast cancer rates in women. Well, once you factor in body weight, but people who consume lean dairy tend to lose fat faster. Now, obesity, obesity, on the other hand, has been linked to cancer enormously. But dairy can help with fat loss. See where I'm going here? The reality is a lot of these growth factors that everyone is talking about don't seem to raise cancer rates. They're not linked. Not from the dairy, not consuming it. So what cancer was found to be impacted? Prostate cancer and whole milk. Now, when I say that, I mean what they found is that men in the highest category of consumption, men who consume multiple glasses of whole milk every single day, seem to have a 50% higher prostate cancer rate than men who consume smaller amounts of whole milk, leaner milk, or no dairy at all. Now, a glass of whole milk a day doesn't seem to elevate the risk. There's no correlation. There's no change. It's people who are consuming multiple glasses of whole milk every single day. Again, the highest consumers get prostate cancer 50% above the normal rate. Now, does that mean every man who consumes a gallon of milk a day is going to get prostate cancer? No, not even half of them will. Because a 50% raise above that is still not an enormous number. It's significant, but it's not like you are taking an enormous risk. And, you know, again, we're kind of getting to the point of most people who are consuming large amounts of whole milk every day who don't work out, probably going to be obese anyways. Just saying, could be a factor. That's a lot of calories. But, you know, here's the other thing. What lifestyle factors seem to reduce cancer rates the most? Lifting weights. Lifting weights cuts cancer rates 50%. Not being obese. And by obese, I don't mean because you gained 25 pounds of muscle lifting weights. That would actually lower your cancer rates. Basically having a certain waist circumference relative to your height. Right? Those charts, that's, that's linked with cancer rates. Having a big old belly. So where in the world is he or anyone else getting this data that dairy is bad for you? It doesn't exist. There's a few minor studies here and there, but when you start looking at meta-analysis, populations with uh, high dairy intake tend to be leaner. They tend to have more muscle mass. 
which coincidentally are two factors that reduce cancer rates. Dairy doesn't really seem to be linked to cancer positively or negatively, really, until you start looking at those two extreme groups given. Very specific types of dairy and very sex-specific cancers. Outside of that, no other overlap. Uh, again, dairy intake helps with osteoporosis. It helps with building muscle. It helps with burning fat. Where's the bad here? Where's the terrible? All right, fine. People have their ethical beliefs. You're, you're entitled to your ethical beliefs. But when you start turning your ethical beliefs into scientific fact, this becomes a problem. Why is it that when people do this in politics, we crucify them, but when they try to do it when it comes to a diet, it's tolerated and allowed? You guys don't see the hypocrisy there? That's a problem. Because again, this isn't based on reality. This is fiction. Dairy's not bad for you. There are enormous benefits to consuming dairy. Total absurdity. Total absurdity. Then again, maybe he's just going to use it as an excuse that he quit consuming all animal products so that when he loses muscle, he can go ahead and back down the dose a little bit so that when he shrinks due to some of his piss poor training methods or when he gets really really hurt he'll have an excuse to justify why he's losing muscle still keep that audience going well maybe you know my, my vegan diet maybe I lost some well that's what's causing it but you know it's a choice I chose to make for the animals and I accept it that's going to be a real good hustle right there and I think that's what it comes down to. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.